is Ryan King, Senior Vice President of Corporate Development and Investor Relations for the company. I've actually been involved with Caliber for uh, well, well over 10 years. As Jay mentioned, uh, back in 2009, we started as an exploration company. We were a prospect generator in, in Central America and Nicaragua for a number of years. Uh, but in 2018, we restructured the company to become a gold producer and we acquired gold production in 2019. Uh, I will be making some forward-looking statements. I'm, please, uh, I'm sure you'd be surprised if I didn't. Um, so who's Caliber? Caliber is building uh, a multi-asset, multi-jurisdictional gold producer, right? Today, we have three operations. 2022, we're going to produce between 220 and 235,000 ounces of gold, between 1,200 and 1,275 all-in sustaining cost per ounce, so very good margins, generating some very good operating cash flow. Uh, since we acquired the assets in 2019, we've seen about a 30% increase in production because of a new operating strategy that we've been rolling out over the last couple of years. Today, we have no debt. Uh, we are completely unhedged, and we've got a little under $80 million in cash. You'll see there, uh, as Jay mentioned, a very significant exploration program. We've got uh, approximately 20 drill rigs in operation today, drilling across Nicaragua, across Central America, across uh, Nevada. Uh, and very excited to see how that unfolds. Almost 200,000 square, uh, 200,000 meters of drilling. And um, just quickly, a little bit on the team. Um, in in uh, just a previous company that we put together was called New Market Gold. Some of you in the audience may have remembered that company. It was exactly a similar approach that we're taking with Caliber. A number of mining entrepreneurs getting together, looking at ways to create value for ourselves and shareholders. In 2016, we started with a publicly traded company, New Market Gold. We went out and we bought gold production and we did exactly this. We explored for additional opportunities to expand resources and make new discoveries. We did that in Australia. We found one of the highest grade underground gold mines in the world called Fosterville. And rather than just selling it to a major, we actually financial engineered a deal to create a lot more value for our shareholders going forward. And we merged the company in 2017 with Kirkland Lake Gold to become a multi-asset, multi-tier, mid-tier uh, mid gold producer, who is, uh, as you, you may know, has gone on to uh, transaction with Kirkland Lake. So this team has created a lot of wealth for shareholders. At the same time, we're fortunate to have a CEO 30 years at Newmont. He's been He's traveled all over the world looking at ways to optimize assets in their portfolio. When he left Newmont around 2010, 2011, he was overseeing 50% of Newmont's EBITDA. It's seven operations, 14,000 employees. So we've got a team that have not only created wealth, but overseen extensive operations. Here we are today on an enterprise value to ounce of production. We traded a significant discount to our peers. I believe there's a significant re-rate opportunity. There's a value proposition here. But then you look at the center chart on an operating cash flow basis, we trade at higher than peer average, or we have more operating cash flow than peer average. And on the far right, when you look at our production profile over the next couple of years, you'll see that based on analyst consensus, um, our numbers are, are much higher. So I believe there's a value opportunity here. We've got eight mining analysts that cover caliber mining. Today, we trade about $1.20 a share, about a U.S. $400 million market cap. So we almost have $0.20 cents a share in cash. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we trade about 2 to 2.5 two million shares a day. So a liquid stock, uh, a value opportunity for uh, current shareholders and uh, new investors. Just high level, what we've done in the last couple of years. So we acquired these assets in Central America. Nicaragua. We've been operating there as an exploration company for 10 years in the top right-hand corner at that property called Eastern Barossi. We had brought in partners. We had looked for new deposits. We had made discoveries. That district up there is known as the Golden Triangle and has produced over 8 million ounces of gold and 300 million pounds of copper. Um, today, we own the Eastern Barossi project that we're advancing towards development and uh, anticipate to be in production there from a satellite open pit hauling that material down to one of our existing mills. But in 2019, we acquired these three different assets here, Limon, Libertad, and Pavon. Essentially, core assets were Limon and Libertad. 
Le Mans, a smaller mill, 500,000 ton per annum mill. Libertad, a larger mill, 2.2 million ton per annum mill. But the Libertad facility, when we acquired the assets, was heading to closure. It had run out of resources on the property. The government knew. The communities were aware. Uh, but fortunately, Darren looked at the opportunity and said, we think there could be an opportunity to haul material from Le Mans on good paved highways over to Libertad and utilize that infrastructure. A larger resource base at Le Mans, it was being 100% used. So what we did was we started that journey in 2020. We started to haul material over to the Libertad facility. You can see in the, a couple of bullets here, we were projected to produce about 50 to 70,000 ounces a year. Because of the new operating strategy, in 2020 we produced 136,000 ounces of gold. Responsibly, safely, hauling material over to the Libertad facility. Um, when we first acquired these assets, we had about 280,000 ounces in reserves amongst the assets. 280,000 ounces of reserves, so high confidence. Um, over the last couple of years, we've been investing in the drill bit, investing in these assets. And as you can see on the, on the chart at the top right, we've increased reserves 250%, and we now have the highest grade reserves ever on these properties. We've gone from net $4 million of cash at the end of 2019 to almost $80 million in cash. So we're investing and adding cash to Treasury. So we believe this is now a solid base to work off of, and we're actually starting to explore for new deposits that could be additional organic growth opportunity. You can see a quick high level. We produced 52,000 ounces of gold the first quarter. It was actually projected to be our highest cost quarter. We came in below uh, our low end of our all-in sustaining costs and generating cash for our shareholders. On the bottom right-hand corner, we're showing a chart. That chart's important because year over year, we're seeing grade-driven increases as we get closer to our reserve grade because we've been discovering and delineating new deposits to bring on higher grades. For example, you can see there, 4.6 grams per ton gold is our average reserve grade. 2020, average reserve milled, or average material milled, was 2.7 grams. Q1, 3.8 grams per ton gold as we get closer and closer to our average reserve grade. In fact, uh, we're working on a number of uh, open pit projects now, advancing through permitting, and we anticipate, because of, because of the permit approvals and development we're doing now, we will see grade-driven, significant grade-driven increases over the next couple of years. For example, one of the bullet points there talks about our project Pavon. Pavon, we actually um, put out a 43-101 in January of 2020. We advanced that through permitting. It's a satellite open pit. We had uh, permit approval in August of the same year. By the end of the year, we were mining and hauling that material down to our existing infrastructure for less than $15 million to put that open pit, satellite open pit into production, haul it down to existing infrastructure. See, the unique thing with Caliber is that in Nicaragua, we've got 2.7 million tons of installed state-of-the-art processing capacity. And currently, we're only using about 70% of that processing capacity. So if we are successful adding new or discovering new deposits, we can therefore haul that material down to the Libertad facility and, and process additional ores. Just a quick uh, view of, uh, of, of exploration potential across this uh, uh, very prolific belt. On the top left, you see Le Mans. Past production and current resources, 5 million ounces. There's a 2 million ounce uh, deposit just south of us. Libertad, 2.7 million ounces of past production and current resources. And then down at the bottom, 3 million ounces along this western epithermal belt. Uh, it's a 10 million ounce belt. So we've now gone out and applied for a number of new concessions. And second half of this year, we're going to be drilling a number of those new concessions. But in total right now, amongst all the assets, we've got 15 rigs operating. We regularly put out news. For example, the middle of May, we put out some excellent drill results on a brand new zone at Limon. Uh, 17 grams per ton gold over 8 meters, for example, in a highlight drill result. So we believe there's tremendous opportunity. A quick chart here to show the utilization of that Libertad facility. So today, we use about 1.1 million tons of a 2.2 million ton installed plant. Right? If we're successful adding new and bringing on new deposits, you can see here grade 
is, uh, is, a, is the far left column. Uh, three grams, four grams, and five grams, and then the utilization in three different bar charts. So we believe there's an incredible opportunity and a high return on invested capital for our shareholders. Just in January, we closed a transaction to acquire Fiore Gold, so now diversifying our portfolio. Diver uh, Fiore Gold was a 40,000-ounce-a-year gold producer, so we acquired them, closed the deal in January. Uh, pan the PAN operation... Uh, produces uh, between 40 and 50,000 ounces this year. A little higher cost, about $1,400 to $1,500 all-in sustaining costs. But we recognize that there's a very good opportunity for exploration at that property. Um, between, over the last four years, for example, there's only been about $1 to $1.5 million spent on exploration drilling at the property. This year, because of our additional operating cash flow, we are spending almost $10 million exploring on that property. We've got two rigs operating at Pan, two rigs operating at the development stage project Gold Rock, and you can see some of the drill results already coming out of the ground better than average reserve grade, which is 0.4 grams per ton gold. So we believe there's an opportunity here to expand the resource base, understand the scope and scale, and then look to optimize the asset. Finally, I'll talk about uh, the Gold Rock project, which was in that portfolio. Gold Rock is located about 15 kilometers away from Pan, so there will be some management synergies across the assets. We're advancing this, uh, this forward now through technical studies. We've got two rigs operating there now. Um, this is a federally permitted project. That's really the long time timeline in permitting in, in Nevada, so that has been completed. We're now working on state permitting. We're working through all these technical studies to be able to potentially announce reserves by the end of the year and likely a construction decision by the middle to end of next year. But Gold Rock as it stands today is uh, based on a PEA that was done by Fiore. It's about a 40 to 50,000 ounce a year producer. Uh, so we could be in a position in the next few years to double annual gold production out of Nevada, but still there's tremendous exploration potential all along this belt. You can see there, we're, we're focused on the blue area there and resources, where the resources are. All the green ellipsoids are new geochemical or targets that have been identified by the, by the previous operator, and we think there's very good potential to discover new zones to enlarge the size of the overall uh, resources. Won't talk too much about our guidance. Uh, we, 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 we can talk about that offline if anybody wants. Of course, we have a booth here. Um, so finally, Caliber Mining is a multi-asset, um, multi-jurisdictional gold producer, generating very strong operating cash flow, reinvesting significantly back into the business, have a very good liquid, uh, liquid stock, eight analysts covering the stock with uh, share price targets between 225 up to 350 a share. So we believe it, it presents a very compelling opportunity for shareholders. And with that, thank you for your time. <laughs>